want to give honor to God, our pastor and first lady, Amen. and our love family. Amen. And I will be speaking to you about wisdom. Amen. Wisdom, all right. Will everybody turn in their Bibles to Mark 6 and 2, please? When you have to say amen. Thank you. Mark 6 and 2. And it reads, And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, that's the church, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From when, from whence have thou this man these things? And what wisdom is it is this which is given, given unto him? Then uh, <coughs> that each such mighty works will work through his hands. Is he not the is he not the carpenter? Is this not Mary's son? Is this not the brother of uh, James? So what they're, what he's saying is, when wisdom, when a man hears from God and wisdom is pouring from his lips and he begins to share it, many people won't uh, take it or receive it because they feel like they know him or they feel like they know you and where you come from so they can't really uh, respect uh, the word that is coming from you. So they, they harden their hearts to it. And they don't want to hear nothing from me because they be like, oh, no, I know him. I grew up with him. I know his sister. I know his brother. I know, uh, you know everything about him. I know his friends. I know who he hung out with. So uh, he can't be that wise. What, what's going on? Where is he getting all this wisdom from? All right? But God said uh, in Mark 6, 11, we want to skip down. Uh, basically, I'm going to paraphrase this. To move on. Do what you got to do. Your job. It's to share what God has given to you and move on. It's not your job to convince them uh, what you're saying is the truth or what you're saying is actually from God because you should have more sense to know that it's already from God and they don't give you that, that power. So let them know and move on. Amen. All right, that's, that's the uh, shake the dust off your feet or a testimony against them. Right? So that means don't, don't, don't worry about them. Go on about your business. Next uh Next uh, scripture is from 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5 through uh, 28. We won't have time to uh, go against the whole, go through the whole scripture, but uh, it's basically when uh, God came to Solomon and, and he uh, asked Solomon to ask him for whatever he wanted, and Solomon would give it to him. I mean, well, God would give it to Solomon, right? Amen. And so, uh, he didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for more time. None of that on earth. All he asked for was wisdom to lead his people, right? Yeah. And so all that does is confirm the word again in James chapter 1, uh, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And that reads, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God that he give it to all men liberty and unbread it not, and it shall be given unto him. Now it might be given to him, or probably if he uh, asks hard enough, you got to have faith in it, and it's going to come to you, all right? Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 1, 17, uh, is dealing with Moses and him uh, being governor over a large body of people, right? Yeah. And so uh, uh, this, this, uh, these teachings are, are for Moses and him governing a whole bunch of people, but we can use these situations to govern our, our own selves and our own lives and situations. And uh, this reads, You shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not, uh, ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause. And if the cause is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. So when he's saying respect, that doesn't mean disrespect people in judgment. It's just saying don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid that their word is the end all, the be all. All right, God is is the ultimate judge. At the end of the day, God has to say, all right? Amen. So don't be afraid. And so when it says, uh, don't be biased in the small and great, there's nothing nothing too uh, minute or too uh, hectic for God. If you got the smallest problems to your biggest problems, give it to God. Amen. Give it to God. Don't stress about it. Amen. But uh, when, I, when I heard about that, and... Uh, I, I thought giving something to God was don't worry about it, do absolutely nothing, and uh, expect the matter to be worked out. 
you know, just magically worked now. I gave it to God, I don't got to do nothing else. I prayed about it, uh, you know, just, just, just go, just go, right? And I do nothing, but actually that's false. That's very false. And uh, I learned through that, uh, just by giving the stress of God, I got to dedicate all my efforts to taking care of the stuff that I have control over. That's right. That's right. That's right. Take care of my business and then just give the stress part to God. That don't mean just do absolutely nothing. Amen. Just take care of what I have uh, control over. If I, like I lost my wallet uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, and instead of, of just you know not worried about it and uh, uh, just gave it to God, just expecting it to fall out of thin air, I was still doing stuff that I needed a wallet for. I was still filling out job applications that I'm going to need my my ID for my social security card for and I'm still uh, doing processes with my cards and stuff because I'm expecting this wallet to come back to me all right yeah. I didn't just uh, just wait on it and just sit in my room and like I can't fill out any job applications because I don't have my wallet all right so I walked in that and then in the faith and, and, and wisdom my wallet came to me all right yeah. Yeah. went to buy art the grocery store and everything in my wallet was in my wallet all right yeah. And all that has to do is, is confirm James 2, chapter 14, I mean, chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. And this is saying, uh, I'm paraphrasing again, that uh, faith alone is not enough. You can't do anything just, just with faith. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. So you got to do your part. you got to do your part. All right? So I Google what uh, wisdom, the gift of the Holy Spirit was, and it said that wisdom is the first and highest gift of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is the perfection of faith, where faith is just a simple knowledge of an article of Christian belief. Wisdom go in to a certain divine penetration of those truths themselves. So what this means is uh, wisdom is a better understanding of those truths, and that gives us a better uh, value of them. Or how to value them properly. All right. Amen. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom, is the ability to have insight into people and situations that isn't obvious to the average person. Combined with the understanding and the what to do and how to do it. All right. So it is the ability to not only see but to also apply the principles of God's word to your practical matters of life by the spirit of, uh, of wisdom. All right. Wisdom is the divine penetration of the word, meaning the belief I had on the surface went from my head and uh, sunk down to my heart with assistance from God. All right. Giving me the ability to see past people and situations and apply the word of God properly to my life and to how to deal with those people and situations. All right. For example, if I run into a problem or somebody causes me a problem, uh, my surface faith comes in and, and I begin to pray and I say, God, God help me with this. I don't know how you're going to help me. I don't know how you're going to help me through it. I just know you're going to help me. You know, that's faith. But wisdom in that same hectic situation makes me more at ease because I have Romans chapter 8 and, and verse uh, 31 in my heart. Being if God is for me, who could be against me? So, uh, yeah, I face these problems with wisdom. And I know I, I can get through that. I can get off. Okay, you're causing me a problem, but God is for me. God is working on Rocky's side. God is in Rocky. And he's, gonna, he's ordering my steps and he's going to see me through this. All right? So my, my faith was just okay. I, I wasn't really sure. I knew of God. I knew of God. I know of his presence. But my wisdom gave me that, that sure and it backed me up that God is real. And I became. I became more at ease because I properly value the word now. First, I just, you know, value it, I understand it. But now, wisdom gave me the, the ability to properly analyze and use this word and apply this word to my everyday life. All right, not just on Sunday, but Monday through Sunday. Uh, work field, you know, in the gym, whatever, I'm applying this word in my life. And that's wisdom. And so. I'm here to speak to you all today about the word of knowledge. And what's crazy is that, I, of course, it's, um, it's orchestrated that way for wisdom to come first then knowledge because they really go hand in hand. Wisdom and knowledge, they truly go hand in hand with each other. And um, a lot of times as Christians, we, 
we don't really value knowledge as much. Like as, as far as learning things, um, in the past, Christianity has shunned new information and knowledge as a whole because we've seen it as a threat you know, to whatever we believe in or whatever the case may be. But we, we did watch a um, documentary, I don't know, a couple months ago about how God is all in creation. So we have to learn to embrace those things because it's really important for us. So the first scripture I want us to turn to is Hosea 4 and 6. And it reads, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no more priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And I'll stop right there. Now, that may seem a little harsh. Um, I'm going to go up a little bit where it says that, that thou shalt be no priest to me. What that's saying to me, I'm not saying that this is what God is saying, but what I'm interpreting it as is I don't want you to represent me because you're, you're stupid, in other words. I mean, you can't really do anything for God if you don't have any knowledge. I mean, how could you be a good representation of God or of Christian, Christianity as a whole? And so this scripture is really important because it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. So many times people are destroyed because of what they don't know. Right. They don't know certain things or they don't know how to get certain things and they're destroyed for it. We live in a society where information is available to us, but at the same time, the quality of information is kind of biased. So when we do get information, it's not something that we feel like we can utilize so we don't think it's important. But we really have to know that information and knowledge is key. Um, Proverbs 4 and 7, it does speak on wisdom. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. The principal thing is what wisdom is. And in all thy getting, get understanding. So the Bible keeps on referencing it. So it must be something of extreme importance if it's referenced over and over again. And how, how wisdom and knowledge coincide with each, with each other is so amazing. You can have knowledge without having wisdom. It's not necessarily a good thing. You have a lot of people that are really book smart, and you know they're airheads when it comes to everything else. But you cannot have wisdom without knowledge. There's no such thing as a wise fool. There has never been a such thing as a wise fool. That those two are oxymoronic. So, with with knowing that information, like like Brother Rocky was saying, you have to be able to use the wisdom. Um, in order to know how to use the knowledge that you have. God will give you the wisdom on how to use the, the knowledge that you have. Um, an example that I like to think about is uh, myself when I played the piano. I mean, a lot of us in, are, in here are extremely anointed. We are truly, truly an anointed ministry. But, you know, Minister Benet, I know she's very anointed. She prays, but that doesn't mean that she could just walk over to the piano and start playing. You know, you have to have the knowledge behind it in order to make something happen. Especially with what Pastor was talking about last week. You can't just, he was talking about um, George Washington Carver. Now, he was able to make all those inventions out of the peanut. But had he not studied, what was it, botany? He wouldn't have had any knowledge in order to, to, to apply the wisdom that God gave him. You know what I'm saying? You have to have the knowledge in order for God to give you wisdom on how to use the knowledge. God has to be able to give you the wisdom. If you don't have the knowledge, you're not going to, I mean, you have, the, you have the wisdom, but you don't have the knowledge on how to use it. George Washington Carver, because he knew all about plants, because he knew about peanuts, because he knew about soil, and all that he was able to save the South, like Pastor said last week, and he was able to make all those inventions because he had the knowledge first. And then because he had the knowledge, God used him and gave him the wisdom on how to use that knowledge. And so a lot of times we will learn information and we'll think, well, you know, what does this have to do? Like me, I learned so much random information and I'm like, where am I ever going to use this? But then God will have us learning that information because he has a use for it. He's going to give us the wisdom on how to use the knowledge that we're getting. So it's really important for us to get as much knowledge as we can because we never know where God is going to give us the wisdom on how to use that knowledge. Amen. Amen. And uh, another thing about knowledge, what I was saying earlier, is how sometimes, you know, um, Christianity, we tend to shun away from it. It actually affirms your beliefs. Like, I just read something the other day that um, that there's this star called UI Scuddy. I think that's the name of it, but it's five million times 
the, the size of our sun, which is pretty amazing. I can't even imagine what that would look like. And to know something like that, you have to think, how awesome is God to create something like that? We watched the documentary, and I'm still astounded by the snowflakes, how those are created. Just having moral wisdom and knowledge on how those snowflakes are created just affirms my faith in God. Like, I know he's real, because there's no way that this world will be able to operate it the way it does without God. So getting knowledge just further affirms our beliefs. The same way he used George Washington Carver. The same way he used him to use the knowledge that he had on to, to, to make all those inventions out of a peanut. Like, when I see a peanut, I don't really see all that much. You know what I'm saying? I just I'll crack it open and eat it. That's basically what I do with it. But he, he had all those inventions because he had the knowledge first and because God was able to use that knowledge and to give him the wisdom on how to use that knowledge. Yeah. And so and when you have the, the knowledge and wisdom combination, then you can be of help to the kingdom of God. Right. God won't tell us, I'm going to reject you and your children. He won't tell us that. He'll say, come on, I have some some, some information for you, and I want you to use the information that you have to do this for my kingdom. And that's, that's what right. we want. We want God to be able to use us, use, use the information that we have through him so that we can edify his kingdom, so that we can edify him, we can show people new things, and, and they got to get the glory. The same way George Washington Carver, they asked him, how did you come up with all that? Amen. And it was I was talking to God, basically. That's how I got it, and that's how we want to be. We want to be able to get the knowledge and then use the wisdom that God gives us in order to glorify his kingdom in his yes. name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Rocky. All right, first I'd like to God. I'm Pastor First Lady. Amen. Um, so I get to speak to you guys about the spirit of discernment today. Which is the ability to recognize, identify, and distinguish between various spirits that confront us. Mm -hmm. You guys will please turn to Ephesians 6, 12. Mm -hmm. It reads, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So right there, the Bible is clearly telling us that it's spirits that we are fighting against. That's it's right, not right. people, it's not the bodies that bring us, the spirits that are in these people mm -hmm. that we're fighting against. Mm -hmm. So when I first started researching this, I thought that the spirit of discernment was just going to help us discern beings. It's not right. Mm -hmm. The spirit of discernment will help us um, with four spirits to discern four spirits. Um, one of the spirits being a human spirit, mm -hmm. uh, which is like like a prideful spirit. It's a spirit that we pick up just by being born into this world. Mm -hmm. Those are human spirits. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was able to discern human spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, we know this in John. So if we turn to John 1:47. <coughs> In this, um, in this chapter in John, um, he was there, John was there to baptize people. So, um, Jesus was there also. Philip went to get Nathaniel and brought Nathaniel to Jesus. Now, Jesus um, and Nathaniel, they had never met. They didn't know each other. But, through the spirit of discernment, Jesus was able to tell what type of person the family was. Amen. Okay. Amen. So, um, John 1 47 says, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, whom is no God. Which means that Nathaniel didn't have it, didn't have it in him to do any wrong. He didn't want to harm anybody. He was a peaceful <coughs> person. He was a man of integrity. He had the right spirit, and Amen. Jesus was able to discern that. Amen. So we are also able to discern that when we're praying for people. The Holy Spirit speaks to us and are telling us what the people we're praying for, what they may need, what they may be going through, and the Holy Spirit will lead us, direct us on what to, how to help them, how to pray for them, what they may need. Amen. So that's one of the spirits that we'll be able to discern the human spirit. Amen. Also, we'll be able to discern angels when that is fighting. 
Um, we yeah. know this um, because Paul was able to help others um, by by the, the the spirit of discernment. He was able to see angels from God. Yeah. So if we turn to Acts 27, please. Verse 22, 325. Okay, so we're going to start at verse 22. Now, let me just let you guys know a little bit what's going on. Now, um, Paul was on a boat with, with a few other people. So... They were just in the middle of nowhere, pretty much. They hadn't seen the sun in days. They hadn't seen the moon in days. They hadn't seen any stars in days. So all the hope that they had for surviving was gone. Mm -hmm. Thank God for Paul, because Paul was there to see an angel and hear an angel from God. So in verse 22, um, Paul, after he heard from the angel, he went to talk to the people, tell the people what the angel said. Mm -hmm. So, verse 22 says, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. So the angel told Paul that everyone with you on the ship is going to survive. Amen. Nobody's going to die, so restore these people's hope with, with the words from the angel. So he told them, verse 23, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, whom I serve. Mm -hmm. Saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that saileth with thee. Come on. So, right there, due to the spirit of discernment, Paul was able to give hope to the people. They, were, they didn't know what they were going to do, they thought they were going to die there. So, through the discernment, um, through the spirit of discernment, he was able to discern an angel and hear an angel from God. Everybody can do that. They were all on the same boat. Amen. Nobody else saw the angel. Amen. 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 Another spirit that we're able uh, to discern is deep. Amen. <laughs> okay, we know this in um, Acts the 16 chapter. So if you turn there, please, um, I'll give you guys a brief on what's going on. Um, Paul was out um, spreading the gospel in the city of Philippi. Mm -hmm. And the people there, they're used to confusion, they're used to being misled, they're mm -hmm. used to being lied to, they're used to false prophets. Yes. So, um, verse 16, we'll start there. And said, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed mm -hmm. with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Now, the spirit of divination is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the kingdom of Satan, um, divination is basically the spirit of fortune telling, of witchcraft, basically telling you what's going to happen in the future. That's not God. Amen. So, they're, they're going along. Um, the same follow Paul and us in Christ, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. Now you see how this devil was following them, the demon was following them, saying things that were completely accurate, things that are true, cheerleading Paul on like on they were yeah, for yeah, Paul. Right, right, right. But they weren't, she wasn't for Paul. Uh, on, so, we know that because she was possessed of the spirit of divination. That's, right. that's not God. Although she's saying something that's true, she's not meaning it. She's meaning it in a bad way. She's not meaning it for their good mm -hmm. because the people there are already used to being misled. So, of course, they're going to look at Paul and the people that he's with and say, oh, it's just another false prophet. Look at her following him around. Come on, now. Yeah. Yeah. She did. Yeah. All right. yeah. So uh, we go down to verse 18, and it says, And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, Paul was annoyed. She, she started getting on Paul's nerves because Paul knew better. So Paul wasn't going to that. So, so, um, Okay, so Paul was briefed. He turned to her and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out in the hour. Mm -hmm. So no, everybody else that Paul was with, they thought she was doing them good deeds by going behind them saying, oh, they're with God. They know what's going 
Uh -huh. But she didn't. She meant them no good. She only meant them bad intentions. Uh -huh. yeah. The spirit of discernment, Paul is able to see that yeah. clearly, yeah. cast out the demon in the name of Jesus, yeah. and then everybody knew that Paul was there for God to spread the gospel of God. Amen. So Amen. they didn't believe what Paul had to say. Yeah. 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 So this happens to us all the time. How many of us have been tricked by someone? Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay. How many of us have tricked God? Jack, have you tricked God before? No. Bro, have you tricked God? You tricked God. You tricked God. You can't trick God. You cannot trick God. So why can we do that? Nobody should be able to trick us because you can't trick God and we're God's people. So with the spirit of discernment, it only helps us, it bends us. We know what people to stay away from, we know what people to pray for, we know what to tell people, we know when the angel from God is talking to us, and not an angel from hell. We know the difference. know when the Holy Spirit is telling us something. Amen. So we're able to discern all these other spirits Amen. basically because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what I would encourage us all to do is pray for the spirit of discernment. Amen. And I came up here for prayer one day and Rosa prayed for me and after prayer she said you need to pray for the spirit of discernment. Amen. And I did. And ever since then I keep praying for it. I keep thanking God for revealing more and more things to me. Amen. And that just goes to show that the spirit of discernment is in our church. Yeah. It's important. Yes. So, so I just encourage everybody to yearn to discern. Amen. Amen.